Hey guys, welcome back again to another video. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, my project is part of a hop that is uh, being organized by the Paper Crafting YouTubers Facebook group. So it is a number of paper crafters that do um, cards, uh, folios, mini albums, mixed media, scrapbook booking, full, you know, 12 by 12 layouts, all the things. And our theme today is campfires and kayaks. And so an outdoor travel -y theme. And I made this little mini album that I want to share with you. And when we're done, I'm going to go ahead and put the base together so that you can see how quickly uh, this works up. So this is um, my little book and it is using this paper pad. It is um, Cartabella's The Great Outdoors. It is by Stephen Duncan. His name isn't here, but it's on the branding strips on the paper. I'm not gonna bore you with the flip through because you'll see most of it um, right here as I flip through the book. So you can see that there's a there's a full page um, map that I cut down. And um, here is the side and the back. This uh, paper is super cute. It's got a little bear with a with a camera taking pictures of the children. Um, Stephen Duncan is uh, by far, you know, my favorite kind of designer of scrapbook paper because he really does the retro um, images and uh, does them well. So um, here in my inside flap, I have another piece of the map. I have um, some of the paper in the spine. And let me kind of take you through this real quick. Um, I just have some plain um, photo mats. So you can place a photo here or put a journaling card here um, or just journal on the paper itself. Um, my intention was to go ahead and stamp um, lines across the tags on the back side for journaling, but I didn't get a chance to do that before I needed to film this. Each one of these has a top loading pocket. This one it says enjoy the sunset. Um, it's got the cloud paper on the front and plain on the back. And I just used a couple of the stickers as the pull tab instead of making tags with um, with twine or ribbon that, that get a little bulky at the top there. These uh, pockets are pretty tight. I think that they would maybe accept two more layers of paper here. So if you wanted to put, you know, another layer of um, decorative paper and or a photo, I think that that would fit all within the pocket. There's another page that says adventure. Here, I added a little um, accordion flip. So it pulls out like this. You see, I matched up some of the map. So it's continuous there. Put a little kayak sticker. And then here is the back side, which is just some different, um, different paper. And then I went ahead and glued the accordion piece down then glued a mat in the um on the page as well just so that it matches nicely added a sticker of a bus down here and this is a sticker that says adventure here we have another tag and it is of the basket this in um this image is on the cover as well you can see here and um, I just built, put, you know, a little scene with some stickers. These stickers say, oh dear, and get outdoors. Again, the blank side of that. Here, I added a little, um, another, almost a page. It is a tag pocket. So 
this is a little extra piece and um, I just made this little page and glued it in against this page on the left hand side before I put the paper down on top of it. And it has a little card inside of it as well. It's matted on one side. I use some stickers in this part as well um, with this little bear and it says stop and smell the flowers so I put a, um, a flower sticker there as well. This one says fresh air. I think there were three stickers that said fresh air in here. Um, this is my favorite layout. Uh, this was a 12 by 12 sheet. It has um, you know, some mountains here in the background that I that I cut off, but I really like this image. Um, so I uh, didn't do anything extra in here. I liked them kind of uh, continuous. And then, let's see here. Over here, we have a little stream. This one says fresh air again. This one says get wild. And this is a floral. It almost looks like prairie print, like prairie dress print. It says Scout's Honor and Gone Fishing. And then back here, I have a couple different pockets. Um, I put them in and then lined up this paper. I don't know that it would really matter just because this paper has the stripes on it anyway, but each of these is blank on the back. I have one with a, uh, a little um, tent. And this one with a car that says, welcome. This one says, campfire time is barbecue time. And then this little squirrely, or he's a chipmunk. I think he's a chipmunk. So that's the book. What I'm gonna take you through is putting together the um, front and back cover, the gusset spine, and these four pages. Um, and that will be our book today. If you want to see the pockets, the accordion, and the um, tag pocket or tag page, um, as well as the tags that go in the top loaders, then I can do that in a separate video at a later date. But today we're just going to get the base of our book together so that um, we can get it all done, check it out, and sit on it and decide what we want to put in it or how we want to embellish it, um, embellish it another day. Now this book that we're making today is based on this book that I created before, um, and it is uh, in a series of videos, and I'll go ahead and um, link that uh, playlist at the end of this video um, and also down below. But this is a P13 Garden of Books paper. It's not on the market anymore, but I really love this paper so much that I just kind of like the images of it and decided that I wanted to put something together that would, you know, kind of highlight these, these images. And this is what I ended up making. Um, and I will, uh, and like I said, I'm going to go ahead and link that so you can see this particular book step by step. It has a few more interactive things, some little flaps and a waterfall, uh, which the book that we're making today um, didn't have. So. so the parts of our book that we're making today the front and back cover and the four pages and the gusset spine, um, they take a total of seven pages of eight and a half by 11 paper. So 
What we're gonna do is take them one at a time, cut them down if they need to be cut down, and put them together as we go. So here I have an eight and a half by 11. This one I'm going to score at three inches. And five and a quarter inches. And I couldn't find my Teflon bone folder, so I'm using a different bone folder today to burnish my, um, my scores. But with those two score marks, we have our, our back cover and the flap that goes on top of the book. So I'm gonna set this one aside. The next piece, page two. Page two, we need a piece of paper that is eight and a half by nine and a quarter. So we're gonna cut this down on the long side to nine and a quarter. And we'll go ahead and score this one at six inches. And eight and a quarter inches. And with this, we have the front cover the left side spine, and this little one inch flap that we are going to glue to our other piece of paper here. Let me show you. Now you're gonna use your adhesive of choice. I know that I know that I lost my glue. hiding behind my scoreboard. Today I am going to be using art glitter glue. Um, you could definitely use a double-sided tape for this, your tape runner, ATG, whatever you've got. Glue stick will even work. 
Um, and so basically what we're going to do is use this one inch piece as our uh, connector. But this page here, this section here is already long enough. So we don't need to um, make this page any longer. So we're just gonna glue that one inch underneath this page. So we are going to set the end of this page right into this gusset, um, not over it because you still want it to be able to fold. Let's see here. Move that out of the way a little. There we go. Now take your time here, line it up at the top and the bottom. Kind of want to make sure that you're going to have a straightish line at the top and the bottom. Just burnish that down a little bit so that glue goes everywhere it needs to. And now we have the front cover, the left side spine, back cover, right side spine, and our little, little closure flap. So that was easy. Next thing we're gonna do is take four sheets of cardstock. And we are gonna score these. These are gonna be our pages. And you might remember we have top loading pockets on each of these pages. So all I did was take an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and scored it at five and a half. And we're gonna do the same score mark for each page. And one more. Now, I like to put a lot of room in between pages when I make a mini album, um, sometimes, most of the time. But basically, I've got gussets in here that are half an inch wide. Um, I like to do that because I like to put some interactive elements like this that are a little bulky or just some random things like a tag page um, or a waterfall. This one doesn't happen to have a waterfall, but I like to put waterfalls in as well. And so I also want, um, you know, whatever I create as the base to be able to support a lot of photos or ephemera, tickets, receipts, uh, whatever you have, Disneyland maps. So um, that's why uh, a lot of times I'll put a pretty wide uh, space in between the pages. So a book like this only has four pages, but it will, uh, it will house a lot of memories because we have um, each page, we have our fold out, we have um, the tags and the pockets. So even though it only has four pages, it can be a pretty large album with a, with a lot of information um, in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and score or burnish our pages that we just scored.
and I'm going to set our four pages aside. And for the base of our book, we have one more page. And this is what we're going to make our spine out of. So in designing this book, even if you haven't used a gusset uh, hinge binding before, created one, um, I tried to design this in such a way that it is easy to follow this part of the tutorial. And if you have done it before, then it won't be a problem. But let me cut this down. So this last piece, is going to be eight and a half by 10 and a quarter. So we are gonna go down to 10 and a quarter. So it's three quarters of an inch basically that we're cutting off here. So I could have done that without pulling out the arm, but. So. For our spine, We're gonna make a series of score marks. And basically, the easiest way to do this is to do your score marks in a set of three. So I'm going to do 12 marks, right? I'm gonna score 12 times. So first, I'm going to score at One half. Funny. One and a half. And two and a half. Next, I'm going to score at three. four, and five. The next are five and a half. Six and a half, and seven and a half. And the, our last three score marks are going to be at eight, nine, and t 10, excuse me. So now we have created a little bit of an odd looking page. Um, we start with a half inch. We end with this random quarter of an inch, but you'll see that uh, come into play in just a second. What we're gonna do first is we're just gonna, going to, um, we're going to fold and burnish on all of our score lines. So for this part, don't worry about which way the score line is gonna end up. I just need you to go in and um, fold those fibers, start breaking down those fib fibers at the score marks. And we're gonna put everything in the right order um, when we glue it together. So just take a minute and do that. And then we'll start gluing.
I burnished all of my folds and now they all bend pretty easily. And now what we're gonna do is we are going to create the little um, hinges and each page hinge has a little gusset in the middle. So if you see, I have two one inch sections scored here. So this is one half inch, this is a full inch, and this is a full inch. These two full inch sections are going to be glued on the other side, of course, into a mountain. And then we have our half inch gusset piece that's going to be flat. And then I have two one inch sections that are going to be glued in the back to create a mountain. And then we're going to do that two more times. Flat piece, two one inch pieces that make a mountain, and another flat piece, and two one inch pieces that make our fourth mountain hinge. So, whoops, just gonna go ahead and fold it over this way. Clear my glue. those together. Now we have our first mountain that we smashed together. So now I have this half inch piece and these next two pieces are going to come together to make another mountain. That's our next hinge. Oop, whoops. When I first made this uh, type of hinge system, it was done, I made a multi-page album and the um, hinges, so this piece and the piece in between were all um, a quarter of an inch. So it was very difficult and confusing for me the first time I did it, but now it is something that is um, pretty easy and I use uh, quite often. So now we have our two mountains, or I guess mountains would be like that. And um, we have our half inch piece. I'm gonna glue these two one inch pieces together to make hinge number three. Hmm, wow. No glue came out of there. Okay, hinge number three. And this last one is the same way. We have our half inch piece. We have two one inch pieces that's going to make our mountain and don't forget we do have this um quarter inch piece here so it is um we're just going to fold that flat as soon as we glue this so let me show you going to pull this little piece up and make it flat. It's just like one of these gussets except that instead of a half an inch it's a quarter inch. So, so there's that. And before we do anything else with this, it is smart to take the little hinges that we have and fold them or burnish them so that they lay both ways because these are basically the hinges for our pages and we want them to um, 
to move really well. And one more. So I designed this to end up about two and a quarter inches. So of course, with the glue and the paper in between our little folds, um, in between our uh, hinges, it might be a little bulkier than two and a quarter inches, but that's what uh, we're going for. And that is why this is stuck. My book, our book has um, spine pieces that are two and a quarter inches. So we're going to glue this in. The first thing we're going to do is glue this half inch section and only the half inch section, this first piece, right up into this um, the little score mark that's here. Let's see if you can see that. So there's the score mark and here's our half inch piece and we're just gonna lay it in there next to that score line. Make sure that we give it enough room to bend so we don't wanna go over the score line. And we are only going to glue down this one section at first because we want to give ourselves a little bit of room and time in case it doesn't set down straight. Um, if we were to glue the whole thing at once, it might, um, you know, get a little crooked or uh, you can definitely do that if you like, but I think uh, for me, this is the the best way to do it so that you can realign if you need to. So I'm just gonna take my glue that half inch section in the front. And I'm gonna glue it down and try to line it up in the front and the back. You can pull up your page if you want to, if that helps you. Kind of lay that right in there. Try not to get glue all over your mat. And of course, these are gonna lay down as well. So while we're not gluing them down, it kind of helps if you lay them down to see if it looks relatively uh, straight, relatively even across the bottom and across the top. And just burnish that down. And before we glue the rest, I'm just gonna give it a minute, probably not even a minute, but a few seconds. So that glue adheres. So now we're anchored. And now we just slather some glue on the back here um, and uh, burnish all the parts, and we have our spine. So, before I do that, let's take a look. I know that I, I was uh, talking about how sometimes, um, you know, if your paper is thick or you put a ton of glue, then this, even if you do the math, so that the spine is the size that you want it. It doesn't always, you know, line up exactly. So you just kind of want to take a look here and see how that little quarter inch piece is going to go. And it looks like I lucked out and it is almost exactly the right size and it lands right um, kind of in that score mark after we uh, glue our our section down. So um, if it didn't, uh, if it if it wasn't um, the right size, if it overlapped too much over your score line, then this would be your opportunity to either fold it in under or um, cut it. I really like to have this little hinge because it's like the anchor for the other side. It's like the anchor on the right side of this last hinge. So um, that's why I add that little just piece of, of paper there on the other side of this, on the side of this hinge.
Now I'm just gonna go ahead in the gusset, each one of these, lay it down. If you have your other bone folder that's the right size, then you can definitely use that. I'm just gonna use my fingers here. So now, before we glue on our pages, we are going to miter these. And this is not very scientific. Um, I just kind of lay the scissor at the base of the hinge and cut in maybe about between a, a quarter of an inch and a half an inch. And this just kind of takes some of the bulk out and allows you to glue on your page and not have to worry about if all of the top and bottom of this paper is um, aligned perfectly with the um, actual page that we're about to glue in. So um, I just eyeball this part. Just be sure you don't cut, um, cut your spine. You just wanna cut this part. Right. So now what we have left to do is to glue in our pages. So what's easiest for me is to use wet glue so I have wiggle time, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue each page in one side at a time. So I'm going to create um, a pocket as well, a top loading pocket, but I'm not gonna glue, I'm not gonna put glue on both of these sides and try to get both of them to line up exactly the first time. Um, I'm gonna glue the back side of it and then glue the front side after. Um, just, it, it just gives me a little bit of more time to work with my paper and to even things up, just like when we um, glued down our gusset binding. If you're comfortable with gluing the whole thing at once, you can definitely do that. Just think this gives me a little bit more time. I'm also um, evening up the pages at the top and the bottom, kind of. <laughs> just leave that in there. It wants to slide. There we go. Yep, it looks even at the top and the bottom. And you see how we have our little miter pieces. We don't have to worry about the, the little hinge poking out at the top and the bottom. Now I put glue all along this on the other side. Um, I put um, glue all the way across this inch hinge um, and that is because it's a pocket so we don't want it to be kind of hanging out in the middle um, doing its thing because we are going to have some tags that go in and out so I wanted this hinge glued at least to one side of the um, of the page so now we're going to create our top loading pocket we are going to put a bead of glue across the bottom here. You can go up as high as you like. Um, my uh, tags were pretty long, but they don't have to be that long. Um, alternately, you can even glue it down all, um, you know, completely and put glue across the whole thing. But um, I am going to put glue just along this edge here and along the bottom and create our first top loading pocket. And when you do this, you want to remember that you could potentially create something that's kind of um, create a bubble in there. So you kind of want to lay it on its spine or on its score and go push out 
towards the center of the book and that way you're not going to get a big pocket of air in there or have it be um, uneven or wonky. So now you're going to do the exact same thing for the other three. Let me take you through one more. I'm going to put glue on this entire section. Gonna open up my page, and it does help me to put it in this direction so that I can see the top and the bottom at the same time. So I line up my paper, the section of the paper at the top and at the bottom, and just fold over that hinge is a little too high on one side here, so. So that was easy to do because I uh, only had one piece of it glued. If, if both of the pieces and the bottom were glued, it would have been a little more uh, effort to pull that up. And again, I'm just going to do a bead of glue down the side here and one across the bottom. And from this outside piece, from this where it's folded, kind of start at the end and push the air out and push it down into the glue. Page number two. And I'm just gonna get these last two done. Same thing. Do the section. Try not to go too crazy. Clean it in, top and bottom. some glue down here. So the base of our book is done. That's what I've got for you today. Um, if you are interested in seeing the pockets that I have in the front cover and the back cover, also the accordion flip out and the tiny weird tag page that I have in the, um, in the other book, then I will get those uh, recorded and post them uh, later on in the week. Um, if you're not seeing this right away, then they might all both be, um, they might both be, uh, filmed and ready. And if that's the case, then I'll go ahead and link part two at the end of part one and put them in a playlist.
I hope this made sense. If you have any questions, I always um, respond to the comments, um, you know, usually within a day or two. And this gusset binding is all over YouTube. So if I didn't explain it in a way that makes sense, um, then I'm sure that you can find another uh, crafter out there or artist uh, bookmaker that has done it in a way that makes sense to you because um, I, I think that it's worth it to look it up and see if you find a way that makes sense because it really is super sturdy and super, um, uh, you can use it for a lot of different types of projects, not just mini albums. Um, so um, you can make hinged cards and a number of different things. Um, also, I use this uh, hinge system to create uh, shadow box cards that have multiple hinges inside for layers. So um, I can show that in a future video as well. Uh, thanks so much for watching again. Don't forget to check out all of the other uh, crafters and artists in um, that I'm going to link in the description box below for the hop. Let them know that Bug sent you. And please give me a thumbs up if you liked this video. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for joining me. Don't forget, safety first.